to the late afternoon session. We have uh, three wonderful speakers. Right. Extension of what we just uh, talked about um, before. Our first. And I'm good. So okay, they. I uh, received all the material to start my presentation because our study was about how parents select books to read to children. It was done by my student Gali Adar and our colleague Dvora, Dvora Dichter. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. And um, and uh, you, we have here in the audience. Um, uh, uh, former students of us, Sigalita Viram, who was the first one that started uh, looking at how parents and teachers look at books and how do they select books. So um, we saw now, I can really skip so many things because uh, first of all, I, I, have, I have to relate to what uh, Hannah said because we are in negotiation all the time. And it, just today, I came from Finland and I, res I bought a book of the Moomins and uh, of Tova Johansson. And I bought a book and I brought it to Hana. And I said, Hana, I have a new book and I want you to look at this book and tell me what are you thinking. And Sigalit was working also with Hana in, um, in uh, Bet Bell. And that was the beginning of the idea of thinking about what books are we reading to kids? Because we did also a study that showed that um, um, development um, counselor, educational counselors, parents, and experts in children's literature do not see, the, uh, do not look at, at books in the same way, and do not like the same books. And all this made really, we are all the time in a long process of conversation thinking, so what about the books? So we know that shared book reading is related to children's language, to children's early, early literacy, to reading acquisition, to social emotional adjustment. And we, when we look at books, we look at the adults, like when we look at parent-child reading interactions, we look at the parent, the child, and the book. And if we look at it, we see that there was quite a bit of a story uh, of research about the parent and the child, but not enough research, I mean, in our sector, not in children's literature, in our sector, in, in researchers that in education or in psychology that look at, at what about the books. So you can see here how many books we have, and I put this together. Just to say, and one moment, please. <laughs> this is, there is a lion in the oh, library. That's the one. It's a beautiful book. And, and um, when we look at uh, the books, we know that in Israel, many, many books are published yearly. And some people think that if it's a book for children, it's enough that it will have colors and few lines, and you can say it in rhymes, and whoop, I'm a writer, and I can write uh, books, and it, it will be published, and it will be bought. And we have in our shops, in Israel, children do not go frequently to libraries. And uh, we used to buy books. We buy the books and keep them at home. And in the shops, you can go and see the shops. We all know Arba Bemea, four books for 100 shekels. And um, it's a say, like, you go to the bookshops, and they are on the table, and it says, like, Arba Bemea. And, uh, and then you just pick books, like you pick tomatoes or vegetables, you know, like if there is a, a sale, you pick, you pick and you bring it home. And wow, we have plenty of books at home. And um, the question is that, you know, being now after Hannah's lecture, <laughs> what can I say about being able to select good books? It is so, it, it's meaningful. I mean, you, I heard you, I looked at you, you were laughing, you were, you were giggling, like looking at the books and hearing what she's saying and saying, wow, wow, wow. Of course, these things are so important. How can people read books that are meaningless? 
Now, what we did is, our study examined how parents select books to read to the preschool children. What do they think about it? How do they select? And what's important for them? And why do they do it? And what do they think about the books that they're reading to the kids? So children's literature, we, we say, the children's literature should be evaluated like any other literature. It's literature. It's not because they are children that you can, you know, like say, oh, they are only kids. It can be very easy. And we, when we look at quality children's literature, so we had now seven um, parameters. Well, we know that it has to provide enjoyment. It familiarizes the children with people and places, provides opportunities to examine and reflect ideas, values. It does so much. One moment, I need some water. <laughs> now, when we look at that, We heard her now, and she speaks really strongly, very clearly. She knows what she wants to say. She said it before, and she knows and means every word of it. But do all of the people look at children's literature the same way? Now, educators may look at books for, to expose the children to rich vocabulary or expand knowledge. Maybe they look differently. Maybe some of the aspects that, that Hannah mentioned are not that uh, in, um, important for them. Psychologists, when you look at psychologists or people that are developmental psychologists, then they look, they, they look a lot at the socio-emotional process. And they say, well, I have a friend, maybe may, many of you know him, Professor Amiram Raviv from psychology. And he looks at things and he, he, he looks for books that deal with socio-emotional um, um, situations. And that's very important for him, more than the language and more than the knowledge. He looks at it and this what means for him. And when we look at people who are experts in liter literacy, they, or in children's literature, they focus on other aspects of the books, like character development. Like saying to us, you know, like Cinderella cannot, or the little mermaid cannot be, she doesn't have to be blonde. And she doesn't have to have a body that is like something that we can only look at in the, on the television. <laughs> So, in our research, we did not look at all the seven aspects that, uh, that Hannah mentioned. We looked only on the language, on the social-emotional aspects of the book, and on the structure of the book. So when we look at language complexity, and I'm going to do it really quickly because she did all the work for me. It's so interesting because in the beginning, I was looking at Bill and I'm saying to myself, well, he's telling the story. And, <laughs> and afterwards, I'm listening to Hannah and I'm saying, so everything here is validation. This is how we call it. It's, you know, it makes things stronger. So when we look at language complexity, we look at the rhymes, we look at how the language flows, we look at metaphors, analogies, wordplay, grammatical elements like homo homonyms and homophones, and new vocabulary. And sometimes new vocabulary is not important for itself, and I really agree with it. It's not that the, the, the book is not for the language, but what in the language is important in the book? And I gave here two examples as well. Are they good in terms of vocabulary, of language? Now, when we look at the socio-emotional complexity, no, I was not joking, I really meant it. Children's literature, we know that a lot of the books, as Rotem said before, exposes children to social situation. It discusses interpersonal relationship, refers to motives 
underlying character's behavior refers to character's emotion, thoughts, intentions, beliefs, desires, everything. And it's not always with many words. Like the book that, uh, that Hannah showed before, Anton and the Girls, there is almost, there are, it's, there are only two, like just one line each book, or each uh, page. And, and uh, it just, it tells about the, this boy who is coming to the playground and there are these two girls who are playing in the sandbox and they are playing and they do not notice him. And he does so many nice things and they do not notice him. And in the end, he cries and they notice him. It's not an educational <laughs> book. And they invite him to join him as, as, as invite to join them as you saw in the, in the picture that Hannah showed. And then came uh, Lucas. That's the end of the book. And that's what I want to show, say in a moment, you know. And it talks about social emotional relationship and, and Anton did all the right things and it didn't work. And then when he cried, like parents do not like to children to cry, to draw attention, it worked. <laughs> it worked. And then came Lucas. So we see like, and also this, the story that, that, Rotem, uh, that Rotem showed in her research about Billy and Gordy, that they are friends and they, they do not really match and how they really work it and do they work it out and how it works. So this is about the social emotional complexity. And now when we look at the complexity of the structure and the context, we want to look at original plot, authentic characters, believable conversations. And now I want to, sh to draw your attention to the ending of the book. Because in the ending of uh, Anton and the girls, he was sitting there, he was happy playing, and then came Lucas. And this is how the author leaves us with this unfinished business. And when we look at this book, Arthur Acoes, like angry Arthur, he is angry, and all his family is trying to solve it, and nothing works. And in the end, you see him, it's very interesting and uh, nice, <laughs> Um, illustrations, or this is how, and in the end you see him sitting on his bed in the middle of a ruined universe, and he doesn't remember why he's angry. <laughs> and that's the end of the book. And, and on the opposite side, you can see books like Mutar Lichas, it's okay to be angry. And it shows you how, in a very educational way, that you can be angry, and it's okay to be angry, okay? So, our research questions were that we had quantitative and qualitative research questions, and our quantitative research questions were to what extent do parents support the language, social, emotional, and structural complexity of books? Do parents who favor complexity in one area also favor complexity in the other areas? We wanted to see how do parents uh, support for greater complexity in books relates to the frequency of shared book reading. So if we look at of, of, uh, uh, um, the book's complexity as a, that it is really answering the, um, the um, criterions that Hannah mentioned, then the more the, ch the parents support the complexity of the books, uh, the more expert they are in choosing books. Okay, they are closer to the experts. So we wanted to see this, and we wanted to see, does parent support for greater complexity in books vary depending on their profession? And uh, qualitatively, we wanted to see what do parents consider a high or low quality children's literature? What we did, our participants were 104 parents, the children were varied in age, they were between 44 and 82 months. The majority of the parents were highly educated, they, like, like almost 22, 20, uh, 82% of our group held at least BA, and half of them held um, 
worked in education or caring professions like preschool teachers, school teachers, social workers, psychologists, educational counselors, speech therapists, occupational therapists, etc. So our quantitative evaluation was we gave the parents a questionnaire with 30 uh, questions on a five-point scale looking from I totally do not agree to I totally agree and the statements related to the book complexity in the three areas like language, socio-emotional context and, and structure and they were, they were um, phrased um, negatively and positively we did that and we gave them two books one is I don't know how you say it in English. Where the wild things are. Where the wild things are. Ah, I, I do know how you say it in English. <laughs> where the wild things are and where's my mom. And uh, we look at, looked at two books that were popular. And according to, we gave them to specialists in uh, children's literature. And according to them, one is good and the other one is not good. Which one is good? <laughs> where is the wild things? Where the wild things are is a good book, and the other one, the, spe the per uh, experts in children's literature do not like this book, even though it is in so many homes, and maybe children likes, like it, but parent, but it is not a very good book. Um, um, where's my mom? So what is a good children, what's a good, ah, and we gave them the book, and we asked them to choose, and, we, uh, and then we had, we interviewed them. And uh, what we did is, uh, we, say, we, explain, we asked them, explain why they selected the particular book, and why do you think that this is a good book, and why do you think that this is not a good book, and discuss a low-quality children's book, and why isn't it good, okay? We just asked them a few questions, and it was kind of tricky because Julia Donaldson is very much appreciated among parents, and they love these books. Uh, and also we ask them a direct question, how frequently do you read to your child between, uh, pr between one to five? And we did, like, like uh, Janet explained, the TRT, the title recognition test with uh, 60 children's book titles and 40 legitimate titles of books and 20 foils. So this was our uh, measure of frequency, shared book, um, frequency of book reading. To the results. This is what they said. They, this is what the parents said. They love, where's my mom? <laughs> they love this book. And only 28% wanted, said that they prefer where the wild things are. Okay? And it was a kind of bit of surprising to us. And we are talking about parents that 82% had at least, at least BA. Now, when we looked at uh, their, what do they think is more important? The language, the social emotional, or the structure, okay? And you can see here that the social emotional complexity, and this, I think, has to do with culture. It, I'm not sure that if you, you were talking about universal things, I'm not sure that if you will do it in other countries, you will get the same uh, uh, results. But social emotional complexity was, they, they assessed it, they, um, it uh, scored higher than, it was more important for, the, for them from both language and structure and the, the least important factor for the parents is the structure, the characters, the, the, how it flows, the, the, the plot. This was the least important for them. And we were talking before, and we said that parents, they want everything, they want this problem solved. They don't want it to be ended like, and then come Lucas. 
even though we think that it's beautiful and you can talk about it, they don't want books without words. They love books with a lot of words. And they want to read the books to the kids. They don't want to start having long discussions. They want the book to do the work. So interestingly, as you can see, socio-emotional first, language second, and structure the least. And then, but when we looked at the, the higher a parent score in one area, the higher they scored on the other area. So there were those parents who were more expert in choosing books, okay? And, uh, the, and also we saw that the more they score on this questionnaire, the more chance was that they are going to choose the better book. So pa parents who know about children's literature, who, who understand what's important in a book, they will the, be the ones who will choose the, wh why, where the wild things are. When we looked at frequency of shared book reading, these are very low correlations, but still we saw that uh, parents who preferred books that are more complex read more to the kids. And actually we saw in the TRT that parents did not <coughs> mark books that, that foils, that, which showed us that they were really, you know, like it was a real measure. And they did, not they did not choose foils. They chose only the right ones, and there was a lot of differentiation between them. And the more they were, the more they were um, greater overall support for books complexity uh, was um, they read more to the kids. What about parents' profession? Do you think all these parents are parents with with um, BA, at least. Do you think that parents' profession makes a difference? Yes. 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 No. It makes a difference. It makes a difference. And it's very interesting. People who are in the education and helping fields and other professions. And it's a huge difference. So parents in the education professions were more likely to pick books that select selected by the experts. So it was interesting to say that, and sometimes it was, you know, in our, in, our, in our seminar, you know, that teachers, even if you have parents in your, in your kindergarten or in your preschools that are engineers or that are in the high tech or in other very, very uh, uh, lawyers or physicians or whatever, and the teachers are looking at them and feel that they do not understand anything, but here we can see that at least from this point of view, parents who know more about education and think more about these, these you know, that they, they, it makes a difference. And when we saw about it, we could see that in terms of language, there was no difference. But in terms of social, emotional, and contact structure and contact complexity, the parents from the um, education and helping profession uh, thought, th uh, uh, thought that it, you know, like, um, how do I say, thought that it has to be more uh, complex. Now, I want to spend my last few minutes showing you, this is so interesting, what do they say? What are the words? So I'm usually a very, I'm doing quantitative studies. And slowly, slowly with Aviva and with other uh, uh, students, slowly, slowly, I'm learning a little bit about qualitative study and about mixed methods. And it was very interesting. I will not go with you through the whole thematic analysis, but it was very interesting. When you ask parents about uh, the purpose of the reading, 101 from our 104 parents related to this, to the moral message of the book, okay? And they say, it is important to me that the book should have a moral, that he should take things from the book to himself, that he should understand, okay? These are in one, like 36 from the 104 related to social emotional support. 
how he deals with the fear, I thought it when, it when my child was starting to be afraid and there is an important message there and it helped him, it helped him cope with fear. So they look at it and they say, I want them to have social emotional support. And some looked at the enriching knowledge in, look at what they, she says here. In where is my mom, you learned about animals, <laughs> what they look like, and varying adjectives like tall, short, street. That's a teacher. Okay. <laughs> so you can see here that from when they look at the purpose of why do you read books, only six from our 104 parents refer to pleasure. I'm happy that there is a moral, but not every book has to have one. It can also just be for pleasure. When we, look, uh, when we looked at the thematic, uh, an, um, oh, one moment, at the thematic analysis, we looked at this, we, uh, one, another uh, aspect was the centrality of the text. So parents refer to the language level, and they said 50 of our parents refer to the language level, and they said developing their the voc the vocabulary, opposite, synonyms. I like when there are higher level vocabulary words in a book. It's simple language and easy to read. I, I, the, uh, what, this mother prefers the simpler book, and she says, she, she stands for a right, and she says, it's simple language, and it's easy to read. You don't have to change anything. I prefer simple, okay? People, parents that refer to the rhymes, the rhymes, when I read it, I, I should be, uh, or the, to the text length, like, I, I need to be, it needs to be short. Look at this. Do we think about something like this? It needs to be short. I prefer more books but they need to be short. More books, but more need to be short, okay? The importance of the book appearance, the aesthetics of the illustration, the parents refer to it like the book is very colorful. Some parents did not like where the wild thing are because it was not colorful. And it's scary. And so they say about, where, about where's my mom? It says the book is very colorful, alive. I have to finish, okay. The second book is much, it's much more gray. It likes blue, like it's like an encyclopedia, you know? <laughs> we buy books like that, they should, should be color. We do not like, he says, they should be colorful. The illustrations are very unique. This is a, a mother that was fa favored where the wild things are. And she says the illustrations are very unique. They engage the curiosity and, mis and uh, stimulate the imaginations. In Where's My Mom, the illustrations are nice and colorful and children are curious, but they are flat. A mother said that, okay? Emotions raised by the illustration. The colors of the illustration make me less want to read it. It's nicer to see animals smiling, laughing, more an optimistic world, okay? The importance of the book structure, the parents want it to be with implicit message. They don't want it, the explicit message. They say the story should not be Ah, this is another one. She says, the story should not be too banal. It should leave room for the child's imagination that the child can finish the story. The other one says, I didn't, con I didn't connect to where is the wild things are. I don't understand the concept of this book. It's less clear to me, okay? Or about, they also looked at imagination and... Uh, the other woman, the other mother says, I don't like imaginary book. They cannot explain it to her. She has, she has a hard enough time <laughs> with reality. These are mothers. <laughs> so we see that parents who selected where the wild things are tended to support greater language, social, emotional, and structure complexity. Great, they show greater expertise in, in book selections. 
and parents demonstrated significantly greater support for social emotional co concept complexity. Maybe it has to do with our culture. Maybe it has to do with our country. Maybe it has to do with what we are dealing with daily. I don't know, but it's it's a fact that it is very it it it. Parents think about it, and they look at books in this, uh, in this way. Um, parents see books as a tool to work on social-emotional issues with their children. Parents demonstrated significantly lower level of support for, for the structural complexity of books. And in interactive reviews, they said that they are afraid that the child won't understand the story when the book is complicated. And, and they, maybe they prefer books that are simpler in structure and content as they often read to their children in the evening. Maybe this is also something to do. And maybe we can say that the evening, it's not secret. You can read maybe, you can read also in the afternoon. <laughs> it is not, it's not, you don't have to read in the evening. And maybe we have to teach them about the structure and in the end, Parents who work in education or helping professions, they, I, sh I talked about that, and they may be better able to see how books present opportunities to promote children and thereby make a more informed choice when selecting books. It may be also that, that these parents went through courses, maybe, or professional development. In some, the study's results highlight the importance of guiding parents in expert-like book selection. So it's not enough to give them, maybe the way that you're doing it and you're choosing good books for them, when you give them and you know that the books that you're giving them it, in Alphanus, Alphanus and the, in the pajamas library are good, maybe we also have to explain to them why it is good so that in the, in the future they can also make some choices, you know, clever choices by themselves and not by Arba Bemea. Improved book selection can create a more meaningful reading experience and in turn can encourage both parents and, and child to increase the frequency of book reading at home. And really maybe it is like Hannah saying, Maybe it's like Hannah saying, you know, that maybe the children will be, probably will be more interested if the books are better and we make really good choice. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you.